How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcano, and I'm a first year family medicine resident that's currently working and studying here in Canada. Now, in today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. This will probably be one of the only videos of its kind here on YouTube, one of the first, or maybe there's a few other ones out there. But basically, we're talking about step two today. I recently passed, I wrote step two, I passed step two. And today I'm going to talk about how I passed that exam, my guide to just passing the step two exam. And the reason why this video is going to be a little bit different is because usually when people are getting ready for the step two CK American board exam of the USMLE, they're trying to get as high of a score as possible. You have all these videos on YouTube of people explaining how they got 260s, 270s. And for the majority of people that are trying to match into a very competitive specialty in the United States, that's always going to be an advantage. You want to get the highest score that you possibly can. But there's a smaller subgroup of people that don't need that really high score. And to anyone that is just trying to pass the exam, especially if you're just trying to pass the exam in a hurry. I was doing this while I was in my residency and working full time in the hospitals and in clinic. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. So I've talked about my journey with the USMLE so far extensively here on the channel. I'll link the playlist if you wanna see more and see my motivations for writing these exams. But I'd love to hear about anyone else and what you're going through in terms of why you're writing the exam, where you're coming from, what your educational background's like, because I think it's important to kind of expand this section of the community a little bit. But also, if you guys liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, I'm gonna try my best to answer everyone here on the channel. And to get into it, I guess the first thing we have to talk about is the common misconception that step two is the easiest of the USMLE exams because I definitely did not think so. And here's why. When it comes to writing the step two exam, this section of the exam, in contrast from step one, really deals more heavily with clinical decision-making. And it's a reason why I actually liked studying for this part of the exam more than I did step one. Didn't mean that I found it easier. And to me, what it really boiled down to is that a lot of students that went to medical school down in the United States had exposure to the NBME exams. And these are the shelf exams. Every time you finish a rotation in clerkship, a lot of schools will test the students on an exam that was specific for that specialty with questions that were reflective of what they could expect to see later on in step two, eventually. But in Canada, there is a growing trend away from using these American NBME exams, which we'll talk about that separately in a, in a different video because I'm not a fan of that at all. I really do think that the value of writing the American board exams is there. I think it made me a better doctor. I think that most people that are interested should probably go ahead and write the exams. But I think that you, you suffer by not being exposed to these NBME style exams in your clerkship. And then if you miss that exposure as you're going to medical school, afterwards, when you're getting ready for this exam, you do have a lot of making up to do in terms of understanding how clinical decision making works in the United States. And just as a disclaimer, it is a little bit different than what we would be doing here in Canada, for example. So you really just need to reshape the way that you do medicine a little bit to match how they do things down in the States. So now we'll get right to it. Here's the plan. And I want you to be able to take this plan and adapt it and change it to however it best fits your schedule. I made this plan. It's a three month plan, but it's structured around the fact that I basically only had a about three to four hours per day to study after a long day at the hospital. I'd come home, I'd hit the gym, and then I'd be up well into the night studying and getting ready for about three months, two and a half months basically uh, in preparation for this exam. The very first thing that you should be doing is getting yourself access to some good resources. So we'll talk about that first. I really only think that you need two resources to pass this exam. The first, and again, not a sponsored video, but you're gonna hear about it again because I always talk about these guys. It is the UWorld Question Bank. I think that UWorld for step two, like for step one, is like instrumental in you passing this exam and getting ready to these styles of questions that you're gonna have to go through. I think that unlike step one though, UWorld questions were good at helping me to prepare, but they weren't necessarily reflective of what I ended up seeing on the actual exam. Whereas when I wrote step one, the UWorld question was pretty much exactly like how they showed up on the step one exam. Step two, there were some minor differences, but I thought that it was very helpful and allowing me to prepare. And when you're using your world, same principles apply as to when you were getting ready for step one or when I got ready for step one. I don't think that you need a manual with you here to read cover to cover and memorizing every possible detail about everything to pass the step two exam. But I think that having some sort of either 
online resource or first aid for the step two is a PDF or a flip through something that you can, when you are getting something wrong consistently, look it up and be able to understand why you're getting things wrong. But UWorld is definitely one of the resources that I would highly, highly recommend. Now, really, the only other paid resource that I think you absolutely need, instrumental, you can't really proceed without it, in my opinion, are the practice exams directly from the NBME website. These are the different forms. They are half-length exams. They're about four and a bit hours and change. And basically, these are questions that you can expect to see almost directly word for word on the actual exam you know it, it's written the exact same way as what you would see on the actual exam basically these are your go-to you could do other practice exams and things like that too i did two practice exams there are a total of i think four or five that you could buy and it's up to you how many you need but i think you should be doing at least two in terms of gauging how ready you are to take the exam now the awesome part of all of this especially because i know trust me i know how expensive getting ready for these exams are and the fees that you have to pay the NBME and the USMLE people when you're signing up for these exams. There are some great free resources as well that I wanna tell you about. Go to YouTube, there are two channels that I would highly, highly recommend. The first is MedQuest with Dr. Conrad Fisher, especially when it came to memorizing the immunodeficiencies and some of the hematological pathologies. He was hilarious, he was great at allowing me to actually remember some of this stuff. And it's always good when you have someone with a personality. So not sponsored, but highly recommend you check that channel out. And the second channel that I really have to shout out because they saved my butt for dermatology for the step two exam was the channel called MD Powerhouse. I will link her channel as well. Phenomenal reviews in terms of memorizing the different dermatology, high yield things that'll show up. Same with pediatrics. Anything you could do to really consolidate your learning and come up with a shorthand of lists and rules is going to be very, very helpful when it comes to studying and getting ready for step two. Okay, so now you have your list of resources, you have your understanding of why the step two is difficult, and now you just gotta go about tackling it and using these two things at your disposal to, to really make your plan and move forward. What I did and what I would recommend anyone else do, start with UWorld and just go through the questions. Blocks of 40, uh, same with step one. I found that because there was uh, a little bit of off time between me starting up to study for step two again, so I started up again in, it was September when I got started, I believe. Um, you know, you start off with 20 question blocks, move on to 30 question blocks, and then as soon as you possibly can, you need to be doing full 40 question blocks in terms of studying for step two and incorporate all of the different disciplines. I didn't do any practice at all in specific disciplines because it's not realistic. It's not the way that you are going to see these things on the actual exam. And you don't have that luxury of spending time on things that aren't high yield. You only have three months if you're gonna follow this plan and you're gonna be doing it for about three to four hours a night if you are full-time in residency or working or whatever it is you're doing, you have a family. Start off with those questions. I did them in blocks. Each block lasted me about an hour at first. And then gradually for about 40 questions, I would get down to about 50 minutes or 45 minutes. And what I would do is as I worked my way through it, first I'd do my pass of that block. And then immediately afterwards, I'd go back and review everything that I got wrong. Now what I did was as I was going through, when I found something that I got wrong, if I was getting it wrong consistently, I'd flag it. And I'd put it down in a little notebook that I had going over key topics that I was consistently missing. And then I do a little arrow and, and draw as to why I thought that I was consistently getting those questions wrong. For the most part, it was either something like dermatology and I would write, uh, need to review more diagrams, more pictures, because there are some dermatological pathologies that look very, very similar. And that's when reviewing pictures and things with UWorld and other resources are gonna be very valuable. But then the second reason why is because there were some things that I found that clinical decision-making rules were slightly different down in the States than in Canada. And then when I was going through residency, I needed to make that distinction for myself because it would affect the way that I would practice if I used the American rules. And just really understanding that as, as a high level, the Americans on this exam are very reluctant to refer out to other people. They are very reluctant to not order a test when a test is there. As a general rule, when you're writing this test, you need to understand that they are expecting that you are going to be the one to treat it if possible. And there's no such thing as a specialist referral. You're writing this exam like you are every single specialist at the same time and you're gonna be the one fully working up this person, which is part of the reason why I am so pro writing this exam because it allows you to understand and learn more medicine from a whole bunch of different varieties, which now as a generalist is very, very important to me. So I studied for five days a week. Uh, there are over 4,000 questions in UWorld. I think I was able to get 
it was over 80% completion in total. And I'll put my stats up on the screen or in the comment section somewhere. Basically of the five days a week, three or four hours a day that I was studying, I spent three days out of the week going through UWorld as a first pass. And then one day out of the week doing all of my reviews that I could and I put as many reviews as possible from that week into one day. And then an additional one day a week to go on free resources like YouTube and watch videos and make lists and review the different types of treatment. And there is a rope memorization component of this exam that is very, very important. But then there's also the clinical decision-making part that's also really important. I found that I really needed one day a week just to memorize things. To memorize when are you allowed to use doxycycline, when is it contraindicated, when are corticosteroids a good idea, and when will it make the condition worse. You need to really just come up with a list of different things, especially if you're getting them wrong consistently, and memorize the actual treatments for them. And that's it. I don't want to make this too complicated for anyone. That is the plan. You can, out of the three months or two and a half months, you're going to study this way for about 75% of your total allocated time. And then after you feel like you've made it a good way through UWorld, you feel like you've consistently been getting about 65% on all of your 40 block questions, then you're going to take your first NBME practice test. And the score that you get on that first test will guide how you proceed moving forward. I would highly recommend that you get that test done sooner and don't save them all the way into the end, which is what I did. And then I would highly advise against that. Do one as soon as you feel comfortable with how you've been doing on your world. And then after that, go through that test, review that as best as you can. You have all of these people on Reddit and, and they say that they've seen actual questions from these practice tests that show up on the actual test itself. And even if it's one or two, like some people say, just go through the NBME half length paid resources because they're very, very high yield. And then you can do other things too, like the free 120. That is its own uh, free practice test that is usually a good predictor of how you're going to actually score on the test. But what the score that I actually got on the test, I passed the USMLE step two with a 219. And that 219 was the same score that I had got on my practice test just a few days before. So I'm sorry if this video goes a little bit long, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time to make two separate videos on the USMLE. So I'm just going to put my tips, five really quick tips for everyone getting ready for this exam right now. This is how you bank really easy points. Just if you see this, you'll get it right and you'll just add to your score if you know these key rules. The first thing is to have your statistics sheet memorized, have the stat formulas ready to go uh, in your head. And then when you get there, you take a little bit from that first block and you write them out on your sheet of paper. And that way, those are just free marks if you really understand the way statistics works, especially if you have those formulas memorized and you've practiced how to use them. So I'll put those up on the screen now. Second tip is to go over all of your different causes of the immunodeficiencies. That one there will definitely immunodeficiencies will show up on your exam in some way shape or form that's the MedQuest video I'm gonna link that and you'll see it up on the screen right now too. Um, easy marks from those show up too. third tip for really easy marks is to review your approach to trauma in an emergency department or a primary care environment there's an algorithm I'll put it up on the screen right now and basically understanding at what point you fast ultrasound versus at what point it's a surgical consult for an exploratory laparotomy it will for sure for sure show up on your exam somewhere that someone comes in and gunshot or stab wound or car accident and you can't see the source of bleeding but their vitals are deteriorating what do you do next tip number four is go over derm go over the list of the most common dermatology presentations that you'll see on this exam because if you memorize those then there's not really much more that comes with it it's really just knowing what this is, what you treat it with, and what are the sequelae that are associated with that particular presentation. It's one video, that's it. The video is about like, it's 39 minutes long, you get at least five bonus questions if you know your derm properly on this exam. And the last one, tip number five, in terms of easy marks, where you just pick them up as soon as you see them, is just memorize that list of the common hereditary cancer syndromes. It is just anything that focuses on direct memorization is, is their free marks if you could just memorize that going into it so i'll put that up on the screen as well feel free to write those down and the associated you know presentation with each of those different things but those are the five tips if you have more please leave them in the comment section below i'm sure people want to know but that's going to be the end of the video i hope it was helpful i don't know why you're writing this exam i don't know where you're coming from what your educational background is but it's difficult i know this exam is difficult i wrote it twice both times were under less than optimal conditions. I was studying during full-time residency and so much other stuff going on. And I am so glad that I never have to write this again, but I know that I'm a better doctor because of it. And now there are so many more doors that are open to me in the future, especially if I could go on now to pass step three, 
which uh, will be coming really soon. Just trying to figure out when it'll fit best in my schedule with residency and everything else going on. So best of luck to everyone studying. Thanks for sticking around today. We'll see you all in the next one. And everyone take care.